wrong with the commercial we made the other day, and why does Gina want to do it over again? Because the ad agency guys decided that it wouldn't grab our prospective franchise's attention. Our presentation package has got to jump out at them and say, you've got a surefire winner here. Well, unfortunately, our bank account is jumping out at us, saying, uncle. Well, you seem a lot more relaxed today. Yeah, I am. I just wonder who that guy is over there with Randy. I don't know. But they've been huddled over there ever since that guy got here. I think I'm gonna go check out and see who it is. Okay. Uh, Angela Mia, please, huh? I'm ready now to begin. We must put on your costume. Prestissimo, please, please. Good morning, darling. Hi, Renee, Mr. Dennison. Thanks for dropping by. I didn't know you were, were going to. Uh, it was my idea, Wade. Uh, just wanted to find out how Mary Lynn is, how she's holding up. Well, first time around, she's really nervous, but I just have a feeling today she's gonna be dynamite. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that, but, uh, Wade, I was, uh, I was referring to your marriage. Uh, how are you two getting along? All right. Well, the uh, the campaign's taking up most of her time, but besides that, everything's fine. Why? Oh, nothing. I just uh, want to check up and see that she's happy in her new life. That's yeah. All. What would make you think she's not happy? Oh, well, uh, nothing. Uh, uh, Wait, I have a decision to make, and uh, Mary Lynn's happiness is a very important factor. What kind of decision? Uh, I really can't say anything right now, Wade. Uh, I want to talk to Clint first, but uh, uh, you'll be around here the rest of the afternoon, will you? Sure. Good, fine. Look, I'll, uh, I'll come back later, okay? Okay. Bye-bye, then. Bye. What was that all about? You didn't discuss our problems with him, did you? I haven't supposed to know. I'm just as puzzled as you are. I, I thought we came by to wish Marilyn good luck today. I'm exhausted. I hope this coffee is what it takes to get me started. Well, I know how you feel. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night either. But at least we do not have to worry about a repeat performance of the WVLE debacle. That's now that sure. Asa has agreed to let you handle his affairs. That's for sure. You know, I'm still angry at hell of both for leaving Paul on his own like he did. I mean, if I'd have known he was in such, such bad shape, I'd have kept a closer eye on him and kept him from selling out to Leighton. Honey, as Herb said, there is nothing we can do about it legally, so. And as far as Bo is concerned. All right, all right. I said I'd listen to his story before I passed judgment, so let's just leave it at that. Matter of fact, I think I'll call the office. See if Jane knows where Bo is. Oh, hello, Brenda. Cliff. Brenda! Honey, what's wrong? You've been crying. Has Steve had a setback? No, Steve's doing wonderful. It's me. I should have known better, but I didn't. And Vicky, I just made such a fool out of myself. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Joe? Yeah, no more ticker machine. <laughs> How long do I have to wear these juicers? Oh, another few days. Good, then I can get out of here and start making up for lost time, right? Doc? Steve, look, I know you've been in a coma. You're anxious to get out there and catch up with the rest of the world, but I don't want you overdoing it. You understand me? Yeah, yeah, sure, Doc. Where is everybody? You mean Max and Gabrielle? I sent them home for a bit of a rest, but they'll be back soon. Yeah, good, I hope so. I haven't seen him since last night. I, I wanted to ask Max why he got so quiet after I gave him the great news. What news? Well, only the best news a guy could get. Gabrielle and I are going to have a baby. Hold on, Gabrielle. You had your shot last night. Now it's my turn to set things straight. You're not going to tell him anything about the baby, are you? I'm telling Steve the truth. It's a miracle he came back to us, so I'm not having him wake up to a world full of lies and deceit. Here's what to do when you don't find... Why are you doing this to me? Why are you trying to destroy any chance I might be happy with Steve? Believe me, I would like nothing more than to see you and Steve live happily ever after. But in case you've forgotten, I'm the guy that stopped you from killing yourself last night. I admit, everything seemed hopeless while he was in a coma, but now he's back with us, and I can get on with my life. What about the promise you made me last night to get some professional help? Well, that was before Larry called and told us that Steve had regained consciousness. So? So? I don't need any help now. I'm fine. Fine? Really? Is that what you call lying to Steve? Do you call that a well-balanced, stable, emotional state? Steve is out of his coma. Our child will be a chance for us to have a life together so that you can get on with yours without any responsibility. That's what you want, isn't it? 
You know damn well it isn't. That child is mine, and I'm not going to let you pretend it's Steve so you can trick him into staying with you. Steve has always loved me. And I'm not going to let you destroy that love just to get back at me. You listen to yourself. You were paranoid. You lying to Steve. You have no concept of right or wrong anymore. Damn it, Gabriel, you better get some psychiatric help real quick. I mean, you better get your head straight before you ruin the lives of everyone that ever cared about you. Oh, there you are. He's been asking about you, too. Hey, how's he doing? Fine. He's a little weak, though, so I want you to pace your visit. Uh, will do. OK, I'll see you all later. Max, don't do it. Maybe you can live a lie, but I can't, and I certainly won't let Steve either. We prayed for Steve to come back to us, and now he is back with us. If you tell him this baby is yours, you'll lose him again. Only this time it'll be for good. Is that the choice you really want to make? Oh, why in the world would you feel foolish over all the help that you've given Steve? Well, helping him is one thing. Falling in love with him is completely different. Oh, I see. I didn't realize that's what had happened. I didn't either, Vicky. I mean, at first I thought it was just the regular bond that happens between a nurse and a patient. And you see, I I stumbled across Steve's journal. And I thought it was a good idea that I do some reading to him. And so I started and I, and I started to discover this man that I don't think very many people know about. And that includes Gabrielle. And then I started getting this feeling that he was talking to me through his written words. And that he actually cared for me, you know. But of course he does, especially if they, if what they say about coma patients is true, that they really can hear and understand when people are talking to them. But how could I be so stupid? I mean, to really think that he was caring for me or shared my feelings. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I've never met him. I, I don't, I've never heard his voice. And, Yet I had this fantasy going, you know, that we were destined to be together. And then when he came out of his coma, I went over and I put my arms around him. And it was like a dream come true, you know. And then Gabrielle comes waltzing in there and she tells him that she's going to have a baby. And you should have seen the joy in his eyes. Vicky, I felt like I wanted to curl up in a little bitty ball and just roll right off the face of the earth. Oh, honey, don't be so hard on yourself. You said yourself there's a very special bond between a nurse and a patient. I know better than to get personally involved. Well, I'm sorry. I disagree with you. If you had treated Steve impersonally, I don't think he would be back with us today. I think it was you, your warmth, your caring, even your love that just pulled him up out of the darkness. How did I fall in love with him? I know it hurts. I know it hurts. But love is not predictable. And unfortunately, it can't be stopped from happening either. Well, I am going to have to find a way to stop it because there is no future in me loving a man who cannot be free to love me back. Who can in residence? Oh, yes, operator, please put him on. It's for you. What? Oh, well, who is it? Mr. Buchanan. He's calling long distance. Bo Buchanan? Yes. Here. No, I have absolutely no interest in talking to that man. None whatsoever. But he's already on the line. Well, I don't care. Think of something to say to him. I don't care. Tell him I joined the circus, whatever. I, I don't want that man in my life. I don't even want him on my telephone. Tina. You know, for someone who claims to be just friends with Bo, you seem madder than a wet hen about something. Now, why don't you just drop the ball and tell me what the hell is going on between you two? Put your hands on mine, and I will take total control of your mind. <laughs> Cord, I don't know why you think I'm angry with Bo. Excuse Just because... me, Tina, please. Oh, right. Excuse me. Hold on, honey. Okay. What do you want? Uh, uh, no, uh, listen, I can't talk right now, okay? Okay. What? Uh, oh, fine. Okay. All right, Tina. Uh, I'm still <laughs> waiting for an answer. Well, I gave you one. Could we please try the truth this time, Tina? 
Look, why is it every time I turn around these days, you are shining a bright light in my eyes and giving me the third degree? You said you weren't going to do that. Tina, you're not going to worm your way out of this thing by getting on the defensive. Now, I want to know why Bo's Bo call has got you so upset. Look, I don't know why you're making such a big to-do about this, okay? But I suddenly found myself with some free time where I could spend a quiet moment alone with my son. Now, see, look what you're doing to him. And I just... I didn't want to Tina, be interrupted. don't hang up the what? phone. I want to... Damn it, Tina, I wanted to talk to him. Well, how was I supposed to know that? <gasps> Did you at least get a number? Well, no, I didn't think to do that. Why would I do that? You know, that is your biggest problem. You don't think. You never think. Oh, uh, what is this? You and Tina Dater? I can hear the shouting all the way out on the terrace. Three squirrels ran for cover. Well, you know, if you want to get a rise out of these guys here, all you have to do is tell them that Bo called on the phone. Really seems to get to them. I mean, Cord here is upset because I didn't want to talk to Bo. Yes, honey. And, and Clint is upset because he realized I'm not a mind reader and I didn't know that he wanted to talk to Bo. Well, honey, we're all a little bit on edge because we found out yesterday that Asa sold all his shares in WVLE to Lord Henry Layton. Huh? Ah. Yes. And we have to talk to Bo, hoping that he might be able to shed some light on the, on the reason that Asa got rid of the station. My goodness, I knew Asa was out of it, but I never knew he'd go and sell WVLE. Yeah. Uh, neither did we. That's why we want to talk to Bo. We're also hoping he can explain Dee Dee's disappearance. Disappearance? Well, didn't she go to Australia? No, Tina. Dee Dee was never on that plane. Rafe has already checked into it, and he knows for sure now that that was an imposter. He also thinks that now Dee Dee knows something about Delilah's disappearance. Oh. Well, Clint, I'm sorry I got upset. I guess you had plenty of reason to be upset and want to talk to Bo. Well, just let me know next time he calls, okay? Well, I can't do that. See, he called from the airport in San Francisco to say he's going to catch... Yes, honey. Uncle Bo's going to catch the very next flight home. Good. Maybe we'll finally get some answers from that boy. Okay, now that this all settled, I'm going back outside. Well, I can tell from the look in your eye that you're not going to let me off the hook on this, are you? Look, Tina, I would love to pick up where we left off. But I want you to get something straight first, all right? I'm not going to accuse you of anything, and I'm not going to take pot shots at you just for the fun of it. Girl, I am really concerned about you, all right? That's why I'm doing this. Now, if you got a problem, if you need some help, talk to me now, Tina. I want to help you. Yeah, listen, could you do me a favor? Oh, honey, could you take care of the baby for a minute? There's something I remembered I have to do. You can't wait. I just want to thank you for taking care of Gabrielle while I was in a coma. She told me all about how you, uh, you stuck by her while we were in Arizona and how you took her and baby Al in when we moved back here to Landview. You don't need to thank me, Steve. It was the least that I could do. No, no, come on. You went way beyond the call of duty on this, Max. I mean, it must have been hard as hell for Gabrielle to hear that she was, that she was pregnant without knowing that I was going to come back. And uh, the, the trauma alone could have caused her to miscarry, but she got through it, and, and I don't think she could have done that without you. Really, Steve, you are making much, much too big a deal out of this whole thing. Look, you know all I've ever wanted is a family of my own, Max. And now, thanks to you, I've got one. Oh, I know. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm embarrassing you. I'm sorry. So before you fill me in on uh, everything that happened to me while I was gone, go ahead and tell me what you were going to before I interrupted you. Uh, oh, forget it. No, no, come on, it sounded... No, no it can wait, it can wait. Uh, there's, there's plenty of time for that. You're not leaving, are you? Well, Max is in there with Steve, no telling how long they'll be, so I thought I'd go and get a cup of coffee. Oh, all right, fine. Listen, if you see a phone, uh, stop by, give Rafe a call. He's been trying to get hold of you. Oh, terrific. Probably thousands of questions about Steve now that he's oh. come out of a coma. I don't know about that, but it did sound kind of urgent, so... Better call him. Thank you for the message. Okay, I'll see you later. Hey, what are they doing to him? Dee all we can do is pray that they haven't hurt him in any way. I just, I can't stand not knowing if he's all right or not. I mean, especially when he's being punished for something he didn't even do. I was the one that wrote that message on the towel, not him. If they want to punish someone, they should punish me. We have no control over what these people are going to do to us. All we can do is be strong and let them know that we are not afraid of them. But I am afraid of them. I am terrified. I am, too. I'm also really worried about that stupid scarf I left in the garden. 
Well, at least Lord Henry has a soft spot in his heart for you because you remind him of his Caroline. Yeah, but that doesn't guarantee that he won't punish me if he finds that scarf and feels that, I, that I'm using him to get out of here. He hasn't come to see me since our visit in the garden. And he was so eager for us to get together again that not hearing from him could be a bad sign. Right, you. Come with me. Well, uh, where am I going? Lord Henry wants to see you. Why? Well, well, why does he want to see me? I don't ask questions. I advise you to do the same. Uh, Delilah? I'll be, I'll be okay, Dee. I'll be okay. Hope springs eternal, eh, Missy? Come on, move it. Please, please, Mr. Motorcycle, away from the name of the product. Please, what else can we do? Smile, my darling, smile. Well, what did I tell you? Isn't she everything I told you she should be? Randy, she's a very gorgeous model. There's no doubt about that, but uh, I've seen a million of them. No, no, you've seen a million of them, but she is special. Mary Lynn is very special. She's got a unique quality that I know you're looking for. Uh, Innocent, yet sexy. Maybe I can use her, but I'm not entirely sold yet. Oh, yeah, well, but any, but any, eh? You have all worked very hard. A ten-minute break, everyone. Grazie, mille grazie. Mm -hmm. How did I do? Doing really well. I see all you had to do was relax and stop trying to be something you're not. You're gonna do fine. Well, I guess Randy's pep talk worked. Yeah, I wish it were my pep talk. Are you jealous? Why would I be jealous? As long as we're gonna sell the Angel Burger franchise, it's great. Oh, thanks. That makes me feel no, great. No, that's not what I meant. I'm sorry. Is there something wrong? You sure something isn't bothering you? Wait, if it's Randy. It's not. Your father was in here earlier, and, and he was asking a lot of questions about our... Well, you know, about our, us. What did you say? Did you tell him you were having problems? No, I didn't give him any details. I, I just said that we were fine. Look, Wade, I'm sorry. I know that I'm not being a good wife to you. But you have to understand that by the time I get home, I'm exhausted. And from this modeling thing and my school project... I know. Everything will be fine, Marilyn. I, I know it will. Vicki, I uh, spoke with Clint, and he understands. I've been doing uh, a lot of soul-searching, and I've made a decision. What is it? I called a few friends of mine in the television and newspaper business, and as it turns out, there's a TV station in San Francisco who's very anxious to have me work for. Now, I would never leave you and Clint in the lurch, not after all you've done for me. I really do appreciate it. Oh, I, um, I checked Lord Layton's track record. You know, in England, he has a very fine reputation. Turns out that his television stations there are money makers. So you won't have to worry about WVLE being driven into the ground through mismanagement. Oh, Tom, we've come to depend on you so much. Vicki, we've been friends for a long time, and, well, I'm sure you understand how I feel about this. Huh? Of course I understand. Of course I do. But, I mean, I'm sure there must be lots of stations in the area that would jump at the chance to have you. Do you have to go all the way to San Francisco? <laughs> San Francisco made the best offer. Come on, you haven't given yourself time to, to investigate all the opportunities. You don't have to take the first offer, Tom. Cookie, I've spent some of the happiest days of my life here in Landview. And some of the saddest, too. Well, it's um, time to move on. Is it because of Lee and the memories? I'm sorry. I I don't mean to be selfish. I just can't bear the thought that you won't be a part of our lives anymore. Well, I'm not going to drop off the edge of the earth. There are telephones. I'll call from time to time. There are airplanes. Come and visit. How is Mary Lynn taking this news? I uh, haven't told her. I wanted to discuss this with you and Clint first. And Vicky, uh, if you... Uh, well, if you keep an eye on her for me... Uh, Oh, Tom, of course we will. 
Oh, I shall miss you, my dear, dear friend. Good morning, Delilah. Thank you, Alf. That will be all. Forgive my coolness, my dear. I didn't want the help to know how delighted I am to see you. Oh, I understand. Oh. I must also apologize for such short notice. I unexpectedly found that I had a few moments to myself. And I wanted to spend them with you. Oh, how sweet of you. I, I was just worried that I had offended you in some way. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, I hadn't heard from you in a day or so, and uh, I, I was so looking forward to our chats. How kind of you to say so. Are you looking for something in particular? Uh, beg your pardon? A flower, perhaps, that caught your eye the last time you were here. Um, yes. As a matter of fact, this flower right here, it's the most beautiful blossom I've ever seen. Its loveliness pales next to you, my dear. <sighs> Gabrielle. Rafe. Thanks for returning my call. Sounded important. It is, otherwise I wouldn't bother you at a time like this. I'm sure you and Steve have a lot of catching up to do. Yes, we do. I'll make this brief. Do you recognize this scarf as being one of Delilah's designs? It's got her signature on it, but I don't remember ever seeing it. Where did you find this? Is Delilah back? What makes you say that? Well, this is the scarf that she was taking to the show in, in New York, the one I helped her with last Thanksgiving. Are you telling me this is a one-of-a-kind original? Absolutely. There's only one like this, and she was packing it in her personal belongings, I remember, before I left. That's why I asked if she's back. This scarf must have come from her luggage. This little mousy has a craft single slice made from five ounces of milk. But this mousey has an imitation. Are you sure Delilah had this scarf with her when she left for New York? I'm absolutely sure. Where did you get it? That's not important. What matters is you've given me the first substantial lead since Delilah disappeared. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. You've been a tremendous help. Anytime. Oh, well, Sorry. where's the fire? Is Vicky home? Well, yeah, why? Thanks. I can't explain now. See you later. Well, hi. Got a minute? Well, no, actually. I don't. Oh, no, what's wrong? Is Steve taking a turn for the worse? No, Tina. He's absolutely fine. He came out of the coma last night. You're kidding me? Oh, Gabrielle, that is wonderful. After all these months, you finally got Steve back. And... Oh, I, I guess that does kind of put you in a bind, doesn't it? Uh, yes, you could say that. In fact, you don't know the half of it. Are you feeling any better now? No. A part of me feels like I've deserted him, you know? And then the other part feels like, well, what good is it going to do for you to go in there and talk to him now? You know something? I don't think you should be putting your feelings ahead of Steve's right now. I realize that sounds harsh, but if he truly knows how much time you spent with him the whole time he was in a coma, then he has to know how essential you were to his improvement. Well, now that he's well, you're just disappearing on him. He's got to be having a real rough time at the moment, trying to assimilate everything that's been happening to him. You may very well be the only person who can help him now. Mm, I suppose. Well, then, go and see him. I'm going to have to think about that one, Vicky. So, tell me, did they catch George Vasquez? I mean, uh, knowing you, you didn't give up until you found him. Believe me, Steve, you're never going to have to worry about George Vasquez again. Look, uh, Larry said I shouldn't keep you from getting your rest, so I'll uh, drop back by later, okay? Uh, okay, Max, um, wait, I gotta ask you something, okay? What? Well, I can't seem to focus on, on what's real and what isn't. I mean, uh, I keep having these, these flashes, like dreams or memories or something. Is it possible that, that, I, that I was aware of what was going on and what people were saying around me when I was in this coma? Uh, why do you ask? Do you remember anything specific? No, not, not really, not, not yet, but when I came back to consciousness and I saw Brenda, 
Uh -huh. She's she was so familiar to me, like I oh. like I'd known her for my whole lifetime. You know, it sounds crazy. No, 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 not really. I mean, Brenda was with you constantly. I mean, it's possible that she was able to get through to your subconscious somehow. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. Listen, uh, I really better be going. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh wait, Max. One more thing. Um, I haven't talked with Gabrielle about this yet, but I, I'm sure she's going to agree with me. Mm -hmm. When we have our baby, I really think that we ought to call him Max. Uh, what if it's what if it's a girl? Oh, a girl? Come on. You, it's got to be a boy. Holdens are made of pretty strong stock, right? Right. Uh, you get some rest, okay? Okay. And Max? Huh? Thanks again for taking care of Gabrielle. Don't ask. He wants to name the baby after me. Does that answer your question? Thank God you came to your senses. Not quite. Steve's not quite up to hearing the truth just yet. But you better tell him, and I mean damn soon, or I will. Very good. All right, now look, concentrate, concentrate, huh? Make this last shot count. Ah! Tutti finiti! Brava, brava, brava tutti, huh? I thank you all for a wonderful, very productive session. Grazie. Hey, you were terrific oh, again, kid. Oh, oh, sweet pea. Oh, thank you. Thank you for very, very good work. And for oh. finishing ahead of schedule. <laughs> Can't you think of anything else besides money, Gilbert? That's okay, Charlie. I just hope this makes up for all the delays I caused the other no, day. No, no, no. It is worth everything, because that was a really a good, uh, a good session. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was very good. <laughs> Oh, um, can you excuse me just for a second? There's my dad. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello, sweetheart. Well, from what little I saw, I look very professional. Congratulations. I'm very proud of you. Well, thank you. That means a lot coming from you. And believe it or not, I never thought I'd hear myself say it, but I actually enjoy modeling. Do you? Mm-hmm. You're, you're happy, huh? Yes, very happy. Good. Good. Um... Uh, so, Renee, come here a moment, will you please? Sure, There's something I'd like you three to hear. Uh, hear it from me first before you hear it somewhere else. I am no longer station manager at WBLE. What? Uh, Lord Henry Layton bought the station, so understandably he's uh, replaced me with uh, one of his own men. I can't do that. He's already done it, sweetheart, but there's no problem. I've had a better offer. Great. Great. Then it'll give him so much competition, he will beg you to come back to WBLE and run it on your own terms. Well, uh, sweetheart, the job is not here in Landview. Uh, I'm going to have to relocate in San Francisco. San Francisco? Tom, Tom are you sure about this? I've given this a great deal of thought, uh, Renee. I've made my mind up. Uh, that's why, uh, Wade, I wanted to find out if uh, you two are happy and settle down. Well, we are, but, Dad, you're a big part of my life. Well, I always will be, sweetheart. The only, the only difference is now, if I give you a hard time, all you have to do is hang the phone up. How's that? Excuse me. I, I hate to barge in, but I couldn't help overhearing your talk of uh, careers and new beginnings. So if I may be so bold, Marilyn, I'd like to make you an offer that hopefully you can't refuse. What's that? Well, what would you say to the chance, the possibility of joining the cast of Fraternity Row? That's the hottest daytime drama on television. That's right. So what do you say? Interested? <laughs> what, are you kidding? I could possibly be on Fraternity Row. I'm not an actress. Wait, wait. Before you say anything else, I want you to, int uh, to introduce you to Ted Block. He's the agency rep for the show. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Coleman. I brought Ted along today so he can get an uh, idea, get his opinion. And he thinks you'll be the perfect addition to the show. Now, of course, you will have to audition, just like any other actress. But I've never acted before in my life. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You can be fantastic. You have the exact quality that has made Fraternity Row a runaway success. You've got it. I really don't think I could fit in. I mean, all the, all the people on that show are, are, are gorgeous and 
and sexy. Well, honey, you don't know if you can do it. Let's try. Great art. They seem to think you have enough talent to offer you an audition. Hmm? What do you think? Well, I, th I think it's a great opportunity. I'm just not too thrilled about the idea of you not being home. Oh, no, that's not going to be a problem. You see, the, the show tapes in Philly, so the commute back and forth is not going to be any problem. I don't know. Come on. What can it hurt to give it a shot? It's, it's a great thing. It, it's just that everything is happening so fast. I, I have a school project, I have Angel Burgers, and my father is leaving Landview. I don't think I can make a decision right now. All right. Let's not rush into it. We're not going anywhere, are we, Ted? No, we're not. And I think you just may have what it takes, Mary Lynn. You see? We're interested. You're interested. You take all the time you need in making up your mind, OK? Boy, this must be so tough on you. Well, at least Max didn't tell him the truth. Oh, you've got a little time to try Tina, to figure out. You're not listening to what I said. I'm not pregnant with Max's baby. So then the baby's Steve's? No, I'm not pregnant. You mean you've been lying about this whole thing? That's just about it. Boy, that's really terrible. I mean, that's an awful thing to do to Max. I mean, let alone Steve trying to save your marriage by saying you're pregnant. That's really rotten. Oh, I'm pretending Al was Cord's baby just to get him back? How was that? Touche. But you know something? You have no idea how much I've regretted doing that. And the question here is, now what are you going to do? I was hoping that you would give me some advice. Well, it seems to me you have two choices. Number one, you can get really pregnant by Steve. Or you could have a sudden miscarriage. You're right, but the, the second choice, I'm really not going to try that until I'm certain the first is not able to be accomplished. Well, that's a good idea. I mean, Steve really does love you. You really have a chance for a future there with him. I wonder how long it'll take before you can come back home. Well, I hope it's soon for your sake. So do I. Listen, don't let this go any further. Of course not. You know I can keep a secret. Yes. You are a true friend. And I'm glad that I don't give in to my urges to wring your neck occasionally. Well, I know sometimes I get very wrapped up in my own problems. Tina, I'm sorry. I know you have a problem with Beau. That's all right. I think I already know what I have to do there. Thanks, Anna. Okay. I know it sounds amazing, but those were Gabrielle's exact words. If she's right, how did that scarf get from Delilah's luggage to the gazebo at Stonecrest? Wait a minute. Maybe Dee Dee met up with Delilah somewhere along the way. She picked up the scarf and left it there the night of the party. No, Dee Dee wasn't wearing a scarf to the party. I know that. That's right, Anne. You said that Dee Dee never went anywhere near the gazebo, no. right? And if she had seen Delilah, I'm sure she would have told me. Damn. She wasn't even on that plane, so we don't have any idea where we can find her, Rafe, or question her. At least not yet. Have you got a lead on her whereabouts? No, but I'm going to put out an international APB on her, as well as Delilah. I swear, if my wife is out there, I'm going to use every resource in my power to bring her back home to Sammy and me. Oh, look. It's little Joanna in her mother's arms. Caroline never looked more lovely than when she held her daughter like that. Oh, dear. I've upset you. Do, do forgive me. I miss my family, my husband, Rafe, and my daughter, Sammy. I miss her so much. I know. It was when I overheard you talk about how much you loved your daughter that I realized how very alike you and Caroline were. If only there was some way I could ease your pain. There is. Oh? Let me see my daughter. How on earth could I do that? You can take me to her. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. No, now, that, 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 that is impossible. Oh, no, but it isn't. I could wear a disguise and we wouldn't have to go to our house. I know the playground that she goes to every day. Well, I, I, I don't know. Oh, I, I... please. All I'm asking you for is a chance to see her again. It's been so long and I just want to see her. You'd do the same for Caroline, wouldn't you? Very well. 
perhaps tomorrow. But please, please, don't hold it against me if I'm unable to grant you your wish. Oh, no, I won't. Thank you. Well, I... I think I'd best have Alf take you back now. Sweetheart, sometimes my love for you and my desire to protect you from being hurt has overshadowed the fact that you're all grown up now and you should live your life the way you see fit. I know Wade loves you very much. I'm very pleased about that. I just hope as time goes on, you'll you'll learn to forgive me for some of the things I've said to you uh, in fits of anger. Dad, there's nothing to forgive. No matter what, you're my father and I will always love you. And I love you, too, sweetheart. You know, what do you think about that, um, that audition thing? Do you think you ought to try it? You know, sweetheart, sometimes life will, will pitch you a curve, right? But then sometimes it'll hand you an opportunity to do things that you never thought you could do. A whole new career. It's like myself going to San Francisco. It's the same thing. Now, it isn't going to be easy, but it's going to be a challenge, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? And you'll be 3,000 miles away, and you'll be all alone. At least if Mom... Well, if only I... Now, you listen to me, sweetheart. What happened with your mother was not your fault. I've never blamed you for that, and I never would. Huh? I ruined your chance at happiness, Dad. Hey, come on. I'm happy. You know, all I have to do is look at you, and it reminds me that your mother and I had our moment together here in this world. I look at the beautiful daughter we produced, huh? I'm sure she'd be as proud as Punch of you, just as I am. As a matter of fact, I think she'd be very happy to know you had an opportunity to do something that would perhaps lead to a career that would make you very happy. What do you say? Well, what if I can't do it? What if I fail miserably? <laughs> Sweetheart, the only way you can fail in life is, is by not trying. Look at this side of it. Why don't you get the job, hmm? Now, all I'm gonna have to do is turn the television on in the afternoon. And as soon as I see that beautiful daughter of mine, all those miles between us are just gonna fade either way, that's all. Okay. Okay, I'll audition for you. Promise me one thing. Anything. Anything at all, hmm? Promise me that you'll remember no matter what happened, I never stopped loving you. You promise me you'll remember something? No matter how many miles it takes. You'll always be my little girl. Always. Well, fine. Please do call me as soon as you have the figures on that. Thank you. Have you seen Cord? Yes, honey, he's on the terrace with the baby. Thanks. Got it? Got it? See, this, what color is this here? Is this blue? See? That's blue, Daddy. That's blue. What's this? Is that pink? Huh? Hey, look at here. Look who we got here, huh? <laughs> mama, mama, that's right. <laughs> I hope you didn't mind taking care of him. What, are you kidding me? Everything that's going on in my life these days is about the only sure thing going. Yeah, you know, I practically said the same thing about myself a little earlier. Yeah? Well, at least we can agree on some things these days, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, how about you? You want to go to stables, see them horses? Huh? Pretty soon you're going to be big enough to go for a ride with Daddy? Won't that be fun? Huh? We'll take a look, huh?
time is it? Did I sleep all day? No. I just put the screen across so that we could have some privacy. I was wondering where you went. You tell me that I'm a daddy, and then you desert me. I didn't desert you. I wanted to be with you the whole time. But I'm sleeping for two now. We need all of our rest. You know, this, this child that I'm carrying, it was my salvation while you were in a coma. And now that you're back with me, it means more to me now than ever. It means that all my waiting wasn't in vain. You may not have been with us, but there was a part of you that was alive and growing inside of me. Constant reminder of all the nights that we shared making love. Oh, God, Gabrielle, I missed you so much. Forget it. It's, it's the only thing important now is that you're here in my arms.